the pink and green and everybody everybody but everybody just can't go that Way. December 2nd, 1921 is a significant epic in the life of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. It is a date on which the first graduate chapter of the North Atlantic Region, Epsilon Omega Chapter, was organized. The chapter began as Sigma Chapter, but a few weeks later was renamed Epsilon Omega in accordance with a rule adopted at the 1921 Boule in Indianapolis, Indiana. What follows is an excerpt from the very first Ivy Leaf magazine in 1921, a history of Sigma Chapter Baltimore, Maryland. Another graduate chapter of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority has sprung into being in Baltimore, Maryland due to the timely and efficient work of Mrs. Ralph V. Cook, Miss May Miller, and Miss Sadie Martin, all of Alpha Chapter, Miss Vivian Carter of Beta Chapter, and Miss Miriam Curtis of Gamma Chapter. These members called a meeting early in October with the purpose in view of extending the splendid work of the sorority and offering its privileges to the young women of Baltimore eligible to join hands with them. Permission to organize was duly obtained from the Boule, the candidates were selected, and a meeting was held on November 9th for instruction preliminary to the initiation. The formal reception of new members took place with fitting initiation on the third floor of the residence of Mrs. Ralph V. Cook on the evening of Friday, December 2nd. Miss Nellie M. Quander, Eastern Organizer, Miss Evelyn Leitner, President of the Alpha Chapter, and the Misses Margaret Lawrence and Lila Martin, undergraduate members of the sorority and guest of the evening, assisted in performing the ritual. The ceremony was a glorious success, ending with an elaborate banquet well designed to restore the recently elected and won sisters to their former state of well-being and high spirits. Sigma Chapter feels that although she is but an infant in years, she is destined to become great in the eyes of Alpha Kappa Alpha because of the exceptional capability of some of her members. Vivian Johnson Cook Graduated 1912 from Howard University, member of the Alpha Chapter. Formerly Miss Vivian Johnson, Miss Cook was the first African American woman to become principal of Dunbar Junior Senior High School, 1951 through 1956. Miss Cook earned her MA in education from Columbia University Teachers College in New York. She also taught for a year under Booker T. Washington at Tuskegee Institute. Miriam Curtis graduated from the University of Illinois in 1919 and was a member of the Gamma Chapter. Known as MIM, Ms. Curtis taught domestic arts at the high school in Baltimore, Maryland and taught classes in hat making at the YWCA. Irma Bruce Davis graduated in 1910 from the University of Michigan. Formerly Miss Irma Bruce, Mrs. Davis was the fourth basilisk of Epsilon Omega, serving from 1930 to 1932. Under her leadership, she entertained the first boule held in the region on December 27 through 29, 1923. Sadie C. Martin. Miss Martin graduated from Howard University in 1918 and was a member of the Alpha Chapter. Miss Martin taught at a high school in Baltimore, Maryland. Lillian Hughes graduated from Oberlin College in 1912. Miss Hughes taught Latin at a high school in Baltimore, Maryland. 
Georgine Lewis Wilkins, graduated 1912 from the University of Albany. Formerly Miss Georgine Lewis, Miss Wilkins was a teacher at the training school in Baltimore, Maryland. After her marriage, she became a member of the NAACP and the Dubois Circle. She then purchased and maintained the Eva Jennifer Neighbor Clubhouse and Home for working women and girls. She was a mother of three. May Miller, graduated from Howard University in 1920, member of Alpha Chapter. After graduation, Miss Miller began teaching English at high school in Baltimore, Maryland. She wrote and staged many pageants for the YWCA and authored a number of short stories. Louise Reynolds graduated Ohio State University in 1917. She was the first African-American woman to be elected to the French Circle at Ohio State University. She later taught French and art at a school in Baltimore, Maryland. Anise Credit Woodford graduated from Oberlin College in 1918. Formerly Miss Anise Credit, Miss Woodford was a teacher in the French department at a high school in Baltimore, Maryland. Brenda Mork graduated from Wellesley College in 1914. She was a regular contributor to college publications and had published many short stories to prominent magazines. She taught English in high school in Baltimore, Maryland, and was the director of the high school drama club. As you can see from the previous slides, two of our charter members' photos have not been confirmed, but we can share with you some of the research we have found so far. Sadie C. Martin has been confirmed Sadie Charletta Martin by Moreland Spingarn at Howard University. This photo shows Sadie's class for the Teachers College in their sophomore year. She graduated in 1918. From the information from the Ivy Leaf, she is noted as short in stature. That is why we believe this is a picture of Sadie. However, we have not been able to confirm that. We will continue to look for that information and share it with you when we know for sure. While we still have some mysteries, some of our charter members have had some very significant firsts. So Vivian Cook was a teacher, vice principal, and then principal at various schools in Baltimore, including Douglas High School, Booker T. Washington High School, Dunbar Junior Senior High School and Harvey Johnson Junior High School. She later joined the faculty at Morgan State College in 1956. In 1938, Miss Vivian Cook served on the African American Subcommittee of the Baltimore Museum of Arts Committee of the City. Sir so Irma Bruce was elected Supreme Epistolus at the Alpha Kappa Alpha Boule in December of 1923. She later served as regional director in 1926. In addition, Sor Bruce was the great niece of Blanche Kelso Bruce, who was the first elected African-American senator to serve a full term during the Reconstruction. Sor May Miller was a poet, playwright, and educator. Miller became known as the most widely published female playwright of the Harlem Renaissance and had seven volumes of poetry published during her career as a writer. Pictured here at a writing retreat of James Weldon Johnson in Massachusetts 1928, Brenda Ray Mork was a writer and social activist often associated with the Harlem Renaissance. She published short stories, essays, and book reviews in important journals such as the Urban League's Opportunity and the NAACP Crisis Magazine. These 10 women rose above the perils of their time to champion the values of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority 
by chartering the first graduate chapter of our region. Let's take a moment to honor them. December 2nd, 1921, more than 30 years before Emmett Till was butchered, more than 30 years before the Civil Rights Movement or Brown versus the Board of Education, these women stepped up to challenge the status quo. Tonight we celebrate their legacy and the historic impact of Epsilon Omega on the city of Baltimore. Please join us later this evening as we raise a glass to our charter members and to Epsilon Omega for 100 glorious years. Don't you know why I wanted to be an AKA and now for Kappa Alpha, uh huh. I wanted to be an AKA and here's the Reason why of all the towns around I searched no better group I found so I joined them right away and this I have to say we have tried, we have tried. and now we made it to AKA and now for Kappa Alpha uh huh and now for Kappa Alpha my pillow, it felt like lead. My bed, it felt like stone. I tossed and turned all night, cause I wanted to belong. The road was hard and long, but AKA, AKA kept me strong. Regardless of tears and pain, I do it all over again. We have tried. We made it to AKA And now for Kappa Alpha, uh-huh And now for Kappa Alpha